we have a new cloud API that has implementations for both Azure, the same services we supported before, and Amazon. And for Amazon, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, it's for the Simple Queue service, Simple DB, and Simple Storage service. So I'm going to open this project I have started, but it's not implemented in any way really yet. And I'm going to show you that I just have the Amazon connection and Azure connection. These are new components found on the tool palette under cloud. And I have my connection information set into these. So the username and password for each account is in there. And that's all that's been changed in them. So now I can use these and get access to their functionality. So there's the Amazon uh, API unit and there's the Azure API unit. So Azure is similar to what there was shipped in Rad Studio XE, but it's been redesigned to be more user friendly. The there's it's completely code commented, and the functions on each of the services are easier to understand and easier to call, and you know what you're getting back. So in the previous API. You may have found it a bit difficult knowing exactly what to call and then what to call next to get the response you actually wanted, the list of items or whatever you were expecting from that call. Now it's, it's very obvious how to use it. Um, let's just go to something like the, this is Amazon, let's go to Azure first and let's go to, let's go to blob service. So there's the T-Azure blob service and you can see all of the public methods are, are well documented and you can see list containers XML and this takes optional parameters uh, which are discussed here so you know what they are and it return uh, it also takes response info optionally. Uh, response info is just a class that uh, let's open up the cloud API as well and that is just a class that keeps track of the HTTP response headers, the response message, and the response code. So if you want really uh, specific information about the response returned from the cloud service, you pass in the response info and you'll be able to get that. If you don't care and you just want the list of containers, for example, um, which in this case is XML, then you don't need, to res uh, uh, don't need to pass that along at all. And in this case, list containers doesn't need any parameters and you'll just get what you wanted back without any additional information. And also, whenever there's a function that returns XML from the cloud, there's also a version of that that doesn't return XML. So with this version of the cloud API, we do the XML parsing for you if you want us to do, to do it. And it's just called list containers instead of list containers XML. Takes similar parameters, but it also outputs the next marker, which is, um, the, the Azure API will return a next marker if it doesn't return you all of the containers, for example. And then you would use that next marker uh, as an optional parameter in another call to continue with iterating over, over the containers. And all of this is explained in the online documentation as well as in this code commenting you can see here. So these are all just really easy to call and they're very similar between the Azure implementation and the Amazon implementation. So if I go to uh, storage service, so if I look for storage service, which is the same as the blob service essentially, I'm going to his Amazon storage service and here they have buckets instead of containers, but there's list buckets XML and it only takes the one optional parameter and that's that response info again and it also has list buckets without XML and it's going to be the same thing so uploading files are very similar the parameters are almost always the same the names might be different just to reflect what that object is on the various clouds Amazon's file service is very different from Azure's file service so we just try to keep the names more to that service so you know how to use it if you want to make an application like the Cloud Explorer I'm about to show you that uses multiple APIs since they're so different, especially these file ones. You might need to stick to a subset of the features to keep the application generic. So in this way we're giving you a complete API using the full REST API of both of these cloud services and you can make your own subset of those that are generic and both of them follow, like uploading files for example. Um, and I'm just going to show you 
this Cloud Explorer that I've written that uses the API. And I already have my accounts set into it. Uh, you can add more here, Azure or Amazon. You can see tra active transfers, uploads or downloads, and you can see the log. You can also use a proxy like Fiddler 2 if you want, and you can enable info and error logging. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect first to Azure, and I'm going to create a container. Uh, let's call it Code Rage 6 container. And you create a container. It's empty to start, but you can drag in and oh, it's too quick. You can see that it's uploaded everything to it. It's uploaded all your files and then I could download them again and drag them back over. And it says it already exists so I'm replacing it. And you can do the same thing with Amazon. So I can create a new container. In this case it's a bucket. And these have to be unique names to the whole service for Amazon, not just my account. So I'm calling it this. Again, you can drill into it. It's empty. You can drag over a directory and it's going to upload that for you. Or you can just drag over a single file. You can also delete a single file and you can delete an entire directory. Let's go in here and that. And so that's just using the cloud API to implement an application, in this case a cloud explorer, we give you an easy-to-use API and let you do with it whatever you want to.